G'day, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about terminology, that is some of the basic components on a boat so that you can be a bit more familiar with what other people are talking about and understand better what's going on around the boat. Let's start with the basics. This is the pointy end. That's the blunt end down there. The pointy end is the bow, and then we have the stern. And then on your left, that is this side, we have port, on this side we have starboard. One of the best ways to remember which is which, port and starboard, is remember the term no port left. Port is on the left, and port is red, so your navigation lights on the port side are red, on the starboard side they're green. So bow, stern, port, starboard. We're on an area up here which we refer to as the foredeck and if we talk about dimensions of a boat some of the most basic things that you'll, uh, that you'll want to understand is which numbers are relevant. Now there's a number of different dimensions that you'll measure a boat with. You'll have what they refer to as length overall, that is the LOA, length overall, that is from the front of the bowsprit all the way to the back of the furthest most overhanging bit. Our overall length is bow to stern, absolute. We then have our length over the deck, which is pretty much from here to the transom, the transom being the back part of the actual boat. We then have our length at waterline, which is obviously how long the boat is from the waterline. One of the other dimensions we have is our beam, and that is the width of the boat at the widest point. And then we have our draft. The draft is the depth from the waterline to the bottom of the keel. So we have our length overall, length over the deck, length at waterline, beam, and draft being waterline to the bottom of the keel. Fundamentally, the bits that are the most important is your length overall. For when you're going into marinas and things, they'll want to know what your length overall is, and your draft. You'll need to, to be pretty clear on what your draft is so that you can make your judgments about whether you can or can't get into a creek or go up a river or do something, okay? So that's the basic dimensions. Moving on to the boat, Given that we're a sailboat here, you'll see the blue sail that's wrapped around here. That's round, wrapped around what's called a forestay. Now, all the things that hold up the mast, the ones forward and aft are called stays. The ones that come down the side to secure the mast are called shrouds. So here we have a forestay, then we have an inner forestay, then we have two coming off the back, which are referred to as backstays, and then we have our shrouds that run from the middle of the mast, and another couple that run from the top of the mast, and the ones from the top are called our cap shrouds. The headsail, which is wrapped around the forestay, is wrapped around on a thing called a furler, F-U-R-L-E-R. -E it's called roller furling, and what that means is you'll see a coil on the bottom, and I can pretty much let that sail out and pull it in all from the cockpit using that coil which is attached to a rope that runs along here and goes back into the cockpit. So that's roller furling. The other thing you'll notice is that the headsail, it's blue, but when the sail is out you'll notice that it's fundamentally white but with a blue strip around the edge. And the blue strip is for exactly where it is now, it's a UV protector strip or a sacrificial strip, some will call it. And when the sail is furled up and rolled around the forestay, the blue is the bit that's affected by the UV and it protects the sail underneath, okay? The inner forestay here, it's used for smaller sails or a staysail or a storm sail, but basically a much smaller sail that we can hank on here Hanking being little clips that go on, and then we haul it up manually. I don't have a furler for the inner forestay. For us, it works very nice going to windward with the headsail out and the staysail on. The boat loves that. So that's our basic rigging. In this case here, again, we are a catch. We have two masts. We have our main mast, which is the higher one, 
and then we have a smaller mast at the back. The reason that the catch was designed was to allow for short-handed sailing, and short-handed sailing is basically less people, so that a couple can go sailing, and the, having the mainsail up, it's not as big as a typical sloop with one mast, so it's a far more manageable. And in this instance here, I can, I can run a headsail off the forestay, I can run a staysail from here, my mainsail I can run, and then I can put up my mizzen sail. So that's one, two, three, four sails, or depending on the conditions, I can run any combination of those four, and they're all a lot more manageable than one big headsail and one big main. So getting down and dirty here, what we have at the front of the boat, you'll see the white post that's going out, that's called a bow sprit. The bow sprit moves our forestay further forward, giving us a better layout with our sails. You can Google the design aspects of bow sprits and what benefits they do. I'm just here to talk about the terminology, okay? But that is the bow sprit. Immediately on either side, you'll see some bow rollers. Where the, where the anchor chain goes over. The bowsprit is also secured and stabilised and strengthened by, you'll see two small chains running off either side. They are called whisker stays. And you'll see running underneath the bowsprit, which goes down to the bow of the boat around about the waterline, that is called our bob stay. It's also a chain, but I have a plastic piece of PVC around it to protect the anchor chain so we've got whisker stays, bob stay, and bow sprit. The front rail that runs around the front of the forestay, that's referred to as the pulpit. And here, this is our anchor winch, or our windlass, and this device here, that you can see, has grooves in it to carry the links of the chain. That's called our gypsy. And you'll see a white rope running here from this bollard. The white rope that's running out there is called a snubber. And what the snubber does, you'll see there's no pressure on the chain here with, from the anchor, which in turn doesn't put any pressure on my anchor winch. So the snubber takes the load, it's secured to a strong bollard, and this is my deck wash so that I can hose down the anchor chain as it comes in. The other thing that we'll see here on the bottom of the inner forestay, and this is the case on the bottom of all of our stays and shrouds, this is called a turnbuckle. And the turnbuckle is used to adjust the tension on all of our stays and shrouds. And then it just has a lock nut top and bottom just to secure it. So that's a turnbuckle. The shrouds are attached to the side of the hull on what's called chain plates. Okay, and the chain plates are, sec are secure and strong and they secure the stays and shrouds to the boat. Here, rail, vertical rails, staunchions, navigation lights. This is our port navigation light, which is on the outside. And what colour is it? It's red. This one here, on our starboard side, is green. This pole here, it's called a spinnaker pole. The spinnaker pole is used to hold out a spinnaker when you're sailing downwind. One end of it attaches to the clue or the corner of the spinnaker, the other end attaches to a loop at the base of the mast so that it holds it holds out horizontal, keeps the sail all the way out and uh, keeps the spinnaker full. We also use our spinnaker pole off, on our head sail when we're going downwind for the same purpose just to hold it out a little bit. We're standing alongside the mast or the main mast Remember, we've got a second one, a mizzen mast down further aft. This is our main sail winch. It has a stainless steel halyard, and the halyards are usually those lines, whether they're stainless or rope, those lines that are used to haul your sails up. The other lines that we have here, this one's attached to our head sail, which is all wound up. This is called a sheet. So this would be our starboard headsail sheet, port headsail sheet. So the sheets are used to adjust the sails where the halyards are used to haul them up. Make sense? So this is the winch that hauls up the mainsail. You'll see this is referred to as a sail bag. The sail bag is used to protect the sail from UV, 
much the same as a sacrificial strip on the head saw. So we drop the sail into the bag, zip it up, and it's kept out of the sun. These gadgets here, these black lines, these are referred to as lazy jacks. When the sail is dropped, the lazy jacks help to guide the sail into the bag so it's not flopping around all over the deck. The other thing that we have here is these floppy things on the bottom of the boom. The boom is the bar that runs underneath here, but these things that are attached onto here are what are referred to as boom tents. I can unroll the boom tents, they fold out on both sides and put an awful lot of shade over the cabin top and in turn keep the inside of the boat awfully cool. We talked before about shrouds and stays. This fellow here is a slightly different one, it's what's referred to as a running back stay. We've got uh, two solar panels here and another two further down the back on the top of the davits. In addition to that, what you'll see back there is a wind generator. And this is our mizzen mast. It's only a little short fella, but also on the top there it houses a TV aerial and two of our aerials that we use for our internet and telephone reception when we're at sea. You'll also notice there's steps on the mast, on the mizzen. We have steps also on the main mast. Now this winch here, it's referred to as a self-tailing winch. If we didn't have this attachment on the top here, which is the self-tailing component, we would just have a normal winch. So here we are down at the stern, or the aft section, or the back of the boat. You'll see down there the timber thing that's sticking out, that's our duckboard. Can also be called a swim platform. You'll see the stainless, the thick stainless posts going up there. They are fundamentally the strength of our davits and the davits hold our wind generator and also our VHF aerial and our solar panels. Down here you'll see that the cluster of ropes swinging slightly left and right there. They are the ropes and the pulley system that's used to connect to the dinghy and very simply lift it out of the water. This gadget hanging out here, this is our boat hook. So looking up the mast, you'll see that there's steps going all the way up. You'll see a horizontal bar up there too, that's called a spreader. It pretty much just spreads our cap shrouds to increase the strength and performance. On the very top of our mast, the primary one up there is our anchor light. The anchor light is a white and it's visible at 360 degrees and must always be on at night when you're anchored. In addition to that, in that same lighting arrangement, in the one unit, we have what's referred to as a tricolour. And the tricolour has the same navigation lights that we have down here on the deck level. And then there's a small wind instrument up there as well. So that's terminology 101. Very basic, very introductory, but I'd like to think that we've covered some of the things that are going to be important and used most often.